Look, the only thing that matters is the having right now. You know, the ETF, mm-hmm. water under the bridge behind us. It kind of does feel like Groundhog Day. Since December, since first week of December, it's been 43K like the whole time. You know, we had one spike up and one spike down. But other than that, just kind of every day, it's it's the same. And uh, I think that's all about to change pretty dramatically as as the having comes. In an interview with BlockWorks, investor Mark Yusko gave his take on what's coming with Bitcoin and crypto. As Bitcoin currently sits at $42,759, Yusko expressed that it feels like Groundhog's day for crypto with the price action. There's not much happening. Many were anticipating a jump in price after the much-anticipated Bitcoin ETF release, but it appears to be a seldom news event. Many experts and pundits believe that the ETF is just slow and once the ball gets rolling, the price will jump. But Yusko believes the ETF is not the driving force behind the six-figure Bitcoin price that many investors are anticipating. Yusko expressed that the coming halving, in addition to the institutional investors buying up inventory, will create madness in the markets very soon. Yusko believes that there will be hysteria, which will cause FOMO only to have another correction coming soon. Let's listen to what Yusko has to say. Look, the short term is clearly, to me, irrelevant in the sense that what happens in these events is the big dogs manipulate in the short run, right? They, they know that they can buy up assets in advance. They can then short against it. And they, and they do all kinds of arbitrage. And ETF arbitrage is why Ken Griffin and others like him are so wealthy, right? I mean, they benefit the market makers benefit extraordinarily and the prop trading desks on Wall Street and all these people scalp, shall we say, um, you know, all of this. It's like it's like when when you think you're trading for free on Robinhood, you're just not right. You're, you're paying way more than the old days of high commission rates in the sense of you're losing on execution and your order flow is being sold to the rich guys. And, and then if you watch the movie, which is a great movie, I mean, it was so good. Dumb money, which is so good. They can just turn it's it off. Awesome. Front running isn't what bothers me. What bothers me is, is the spread. You, you think when you put in a market order, again, you're not getting a good fill, right? It's just, there's a very wide spread in the bowels of of the trading um and and it's fine right i mean look anything that's free facebook is free but you you're paying for it in the sense of uh i mean not directly like it's not money out of your pocket but um you are the product so lots lots of things that are free that aren't free you know the idea that that all of the money Right. We've talked about all the different estimates from, you know, 30 billion. If, you know, investors that the captive investor base in these brokerage firms that haven't been allowed to participate, you know, is roughly 30 trillion, pick a number and 0.1% would be 30 billion. And that, that, you know, would move the market. And we've seen about a third of that. We've seen a little over 10 kind of come this way. But it doesn't happen in day one. And and it gets, I would argue that 0.1 is even kind of a silly number. I think it's easily going to be 1%. So that's 300 billion. But what we saw was a bunch of the big guys said, oh, no, 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 no. Even though this is a BlackRock or Fidelity approved ETF, we're still not going to let you buy it with your money. So people said, well, I'm out, right? I'll just leave and go someplace else. But um, eventually, I think they're going to change their minds, and that money will continue in right now, every day, and we'll see how long it lasts. But I, I think it's going to last for a while. Every day, the ETF complex is buying roughly three times the number of Bitcoin that are mined. So we got the having socks on today, and that's only for the next three months. Three months from now, that number goes from 900 to 450. If the same pace keeps up, which I think is pretty likely, um, you're going to be talking six times 
the daily production. And so that is a supply demand imbalance that will lead to rising prices. And I mean, people have heard this from me ad nauseum, rising prices beget rising prices, right? Once an asset starts to move, people are drawn to it. That's, that's the way it works. And that will push us past fair value into, you know, silly levels sometime in the crypto fall that'll start, you know, next June. And a year from now, I think we'll be talking about, oh my gosh, how did we get to triple digit Bitcoin? And when's the bear market coming? Because there will be another bear market because the FOMO gets really extreme as you start to go parabolic in any asset, like NVIDIA right now. I mean, Tesla before, I mean, NVIDIA right now is, it's, it's amazing to watch. We have now more passive money than active in the United States. What does that mean? We have more index funds and ETFs, passive. Now, passive, by the way, is not passive. This is this, you know, I tweeted this out the other day. In the last uh, 20 years, only 31% of companies that went public still exist. Think about that number. 69% of them gone. So there is turnover in these indices. It's just slow. But what they are, they are capitalization weighted, meaning they have to buy the th- more of things as they become expensive. So they get more and more and more concentrated. And we saw this phenomenon in 2000, and you get to a point where silliness, right? Cisco at 286 times earnings. And people finally wake up and say, oh, that's bad. And you have a correction. And here we are again. And you got all these companies now trading 100, 150 times earnings, 30, 40 times revenues. And people are like, no, 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 it's different this time. <laughs> Four most dangerous words in investing. And, and it will end. But when people try to short it, and we've talked about this before with MicroStrategy in 2000. You can try to short the stupidity. And I'm not, com- MicroStrategy in 2000 is very different than NVIDIA. It's more like Cisco and Microsoft to NVIDIA. Perfectly good, or Intel. Intel went up 20-fold. Think about that. It went up 20-fold in four years because it was going to change the world with AI. <laughs> it's funny, back in 2000, they were talking about AI. And now it's down 40% since then. So, because it got, you know, displaced. And you know, I saw the, the CEO of NVIDIA on the other day talking about, you know, the entire um, structure of computing is changing and we're leading that. And <laughs> this is great. I love people who are humble braggers. I mean, he's, he's very soft-spoken so, and, and we're the only company that gets this. Really? Really, you think you're the only company in the world that gets that we're in a transformational move in in computing? Okay, fine. Um, you know, I have a few companies that would disagree with that, but uh, but if you short that in a momentum world, you get knocked down. So, totally agree with you. And actually, we have data on this. So the the volatility it's from this side. It's volatility is trending down in, I can't, it's, it's, it's reversed on my screen. I can't do it. It's confusing my brain. Um, but uh, volatility Bitcoin was triple digits when it started because it was a science project. There was no there there. It was two, it was super vol, a little penny to two pennies. That's a hundred percent move. Um, but as it has gotten more mature and gotten bigger, that volatility is, is now trended down. It's like in the forties. Uh, Long term, still closer to to 65, 70, but we're definitely going to trend down. And it's because the passive holders, hodlers are part of that, but now the ETF is structurally a passive holder. Leverage is also down. So there's not as much leverage and as much speculation. Uh, There there will be more leverage. Leverage will come back, but, but there's not as much as there was. Um, so I don't, I don't disagree with that at all. But the the passive versus active debate is is a tough one because the more passive there is, the more sh- the more you just keep 
reducing the supply. And that's like a supply shock. To watch the full interview, check out the link in the description. What do you think of Yusko's thoughts here? Do you see Bitcoin hitting six figures this year? Leave a comment. If you found value in the content, hit the like button, as that greatly helps the channel find similar viewers like you. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on the current market and news. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.